Hey viewing people, I'm your host Mac Wales, and welcome to Firewatch. Now, um, this is actually a pretty highly acclaimed game, and I haven't played it yet, because I'm a bum. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to this, seeing as it won a lot of, re a lot of awards, so... Man, it runs pretty, that's very fancy. We'll see how it runs on my potato computer. Am I in a diner? Campo Santo! Panicking. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. That's like 32 years ago. You see, Julia. Okay. Oh, okay. I gotta click on it. You see, Julia. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. That's not responsible. Don't drink. While you're in college, it's not good for you. You approach her. I do? Well, you are drunk. <laughs> well, that's not responsible either. Don't get drunk. While at college, it's irresponsible. So, what's your, you know, major... Yeah, that's a good way to start it. You slur the word major and it smells like cores. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says. And I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology. <laughs> What's that, a burn, you ask? She says, definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks you if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Wow, that was fast. Wow. She makes quick decisions. Screen is black. Oh! Oh no, I'm gonna have to turn the graphics down. Actually, actually, you know what? I don't, I don't think I do. This actually, this is just motion blur. Oh yeah, this is running fine. Is this my truck? Load gear. Ugh, stupid backpack. Ugh. Throw it in the back of my truck. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. It's very irresponsible to move in with your girlfriend unless you're married. Could lead to problems. Don't do it. I don't know from experience. You drink beer just about anywhere because you're an alcoholic. An alcoholic... It, and, ugh, being an alcoholic is not good. Life is good. Sure, okay. Julia wants to get a dog. Great, I love dogs. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German shepherd. <gasps> but nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's bad, but I will cover that. I will cover that. I promise. It's a bad word. Hmm. I want to get the one that she likes. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him, too. I love German Shepherds, but I want to get what she likes. 1979. It's been four years. You walk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you, ha if you and I have some. A couple little idiots. That's mean. That would be pretty good. In that case, she would we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. That's a very, like... That's not the right way to look at marriage. I gotta say. Marriage is a very important commitment. Oh, okay, now we're doing this. So what? I have very stubby fingers. I'm a very... There we go. Look at me. Look at me and my stupid little hands. For a fair trailhead, no fireworks. Do not forget to check in. You're in their country. Learn to live with bears. I don't live with bears. Bears live with me. Thor a fair trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Little do you know, I'm the most experienced hiker there is. I am... Chuck Norris with stubby fingers. Oh, okay, we're going dark. 
All right. 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Nah, ignore her. You don't touch each other all night. Well, that's good, because you're not married yet. The next day, you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny, a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. Julia still likes to draw. She draws up plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You look awesome. <laughs> How's this, babe? I do look quite rather awesome, I must say. That looks like a spiky death. Don't touch it, you will die. That's a very simplistic tree. Very interesting art style. I like it. Kind of reminds me of Breath of the Wild. Which I can actually play because I have a thing and I can do Nintendo stuff. So I want to do that sometime. I want to do Breath of the Wild series sometime but s stuff aside two forks fire lookout well i'm the fire watchman i assume space bar to climb over obstructions well i would think so jumping over things as you this almost looks like tf2 graphics during the summers you and julia enjoy walking bucket at night there's a festival in town it brings in folks from faraway places one of them tries to mug you with an oh no Oh no, bad, bad word. Bucket gets kicked. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Bad word, dog. Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. You beat his face in. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Very sorry for the bad words. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Oh no. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Agree if she commutes back and forth. Convince her not to take the job. Those are both terrible choices. If she commutes back and forth, it's 2,000 miles away! It's in Connecticut! You're like, where in like... I don't know. Tell her that this means you two won't have a family. She says that's bullcrap, but she's totally right. She asks if you're taking the job means you won't come with her. You say yes again, bullcrap. But she decides not to take it. Oh, no. I'm a terrible person. Julia is asked to leave Boulder on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk about so talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget. No. Confront the problem. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they're worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's for Oh, That's sad. Pick up journal. Oh. He-Man! King Beef. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university... Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into it. No, bad. After five minutes, she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family and they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. They're in Australia? What? That means she has an Australian accent. That's cool. 
For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day, but she gets worse. No making love. No, you gotta get married. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. She suggests that he suggests that Julia could live somewhere else somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. I'm determined to take care of her myself. Walk. Walk, walk, walk. Is this going to be the whole game? Or is this the intro? Because if this is the intro, this is a pretty bomb intro. But if it's the entire game, then, like... It's an emotional train wreck, but... Well... I don't know. Whoa. Greetings, majestic creature. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter. Drinking then, too. Drinking is good if done responsibly, but don't get drunk. It's not good for yourself. You start going out after you put her to bed. First time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door. You trust that she sleeps like a rock. Take precautions. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple of nights a week. You look forward to those nights. One night, you're stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a .10 or are taken to jail for the night. See? Drinking a too much is a bad. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. Is this the Firewatch job? Possibly, I think. I feel like that's what it's alluding to. Very nice piano music, though. Ah, yes! Enter the lookout tower. It's night now. Gee, it took me a while. So, uh, I guess I just watch the woods. Make sure there's no fires. I watch fire. I am fire watch. Do I get my own cool, like, theme music like everyone in Overwatch does? Dude, this place is a wreck. Turn on the power. Oh, actually, this is rather cozy. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Hi. Hold left shift to activate radio. Pinco pin cone? Pinco? <laughs> Pine cone. Okay, reply. Left shift. Uh. Hello? Um, hello? Oh! You know this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Hi, Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said. What's it like in New York City? <laughs> ha! Got him! So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? I'm sorry. People take this job to get away from something. So what's wrong? What's wrong with you? <laughs> That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. Voice acting is tap now. What's wrong with me? Fine. Then can I sleep forever? <laughs> sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. You've killed three ex-husbands. You're, <laughs> you're rebelling against mom. Nobody back home can stand you. Okay, you're probably out here because nobody back home can stand you. Which, after this brief introduction, is not a big shock. Ouch. Uh, I'll chalk that up to you being tired and grumpy. Well, I'd better get some sleep then. One sec. Now it's my turn. <gasps> no. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. 
That's the sort of nope. reason you'll find a man out in the woods. That's a bad. Good night. Welcome to the job. Hey. Firewatch, day one. Okay. I have a lot of censoring to do. No. Oh. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. She can see me at my desk? What? Are you a stalker? I think this is where I'm going to end the episode. I want to keep it at around the 15 minute level and there isn't too much to cut out of this. So the recording sessions are going to be a little smaller. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching my video. This is the introduction to Firewatch and I hope that it, uh, I hope it gets better. I mean, the introduction, that's a really cool introduction. I'm looking forward to see what it has in store for us later though. So thank you guys so much for watching my video and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Hey viewing people, thank you so much for watching my video, and if you really enjoyed it, consider liking and or subscribing to my channel for future content.